Well, hello, and thank you very much for joining us. Um, we're here today to uh, talk in a little bit more detail about the Rescue Japan Limit Study. And I'm so honored to be here today with two of the main investigators, Shin Yoshimura and Kazuo Uchida. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, if you want to say a little bit of each one of you about where you're from and how you were involved in the study. Okay, um, I'm Dr. Yoshimura from uh, Nishinomiya, Hyogo, Japan. I'm a PI of this study. I'm a clinician, a neurosurgeon, and a interventionalist. And uh, well, we started this study uh, together with uh, Dr. Sakai and Dr. Yamagami, co-PIs. Thank you. And Kazu? Thank you. Uh, my name is Kazutaka Uchida. Uh, I'm one of the co-investigators and uh, an analyzed the data with Professor Morimoto. So uh, I would like to join this interview. Excellent. Thank you. And I'm Justin Fraser from University of Kentucky. And again, so pleased and honored to have this opportunity to speak with you today. So uh, Shin, if you could start off and just tell us a little bit about what was the motivation behind this study? What was what were you all trying to achieve when you put this together? Thank you uh, for your question. Actually, uh, effectiveness of the endovascular therapy for uh, acute large vessel occlusion was uh, established in 2015, as you know. Uh, however, uh, in real world setting, uh, many patients did not meet the AHA guidelines uh, recommendation criteria. Uh, such as a uh, location of uh, occlusion and or aspect was uh, lower than six or uh, time was so delayed. So uh, we started this trial to save more patient with uh, large infarctions. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and you know, many of us who work in stroke, myself, for example, use the aspect score every day, as you know, but Many of some of our viewers may not be as familiar with it. Can you kind of just give us a quick summary as to what aspects is and why it was important to your study? Okay, uh, to uh, the aspects, uh, Albert Stroke Program Early CT Score is a quantitative score that measures the extent of early ischemic changes in anterior circulation hyperacute ischemic stroke. So to evaluate the severity of the stroke uh, volume or wheels, we use aspects um, for, especially for before uh, mechanical thrombectomy. Right, so interestingly, you know, for many years, several years now, as we all have been doing thrombectomy, as it's become a standard of care everywhere, you know, there's been this conception that patients with, lar with low aspects or large quote unquote completed strokes on non-contrast head CT couldn't possibly benefit from thrombectomy. But, um, but clearly there are studies afoot is, is yours to try to understand this and maybe even question that. And would it be accurate to say that that's really what you were doing here is really questioning this idea that these patients were beyond hope? Mm. Uh, to to expand the indication of endovascular therapy uh, for the patient, uh, we focused on the uh, patient with large infarctions. So right. especially uh, uh, aspects six or higher uh, score was good indication for endovascular therapy. But yeah. in real world setting, we frequently encounter the patient with uh, uh, large infarctions uh, evaluated by CT or MRI. And, uh, but among such a patient, uh, we sometimes encounter the dramatic uh, improvement after reopening of the vessels. So we wanted to know whether a mechanical thrombectomy is effective or not for such patients. Okay. And so in designing your trial, um, if you can kind of briefly summarize for me some of the main aspects of your uh, methodology, what, what was your primary outcome, you know, and what were, you, what were some of the other things that you were trying to study? 
Um, thank you. Uh, we previously reported that the, we conducted a nationwide surveillance uh, about the acute large vessel occlusion in Japan. Uh, we collected 2,400 2, patients. Among them, we collected the information from the patient having uh, aspect 025, 025. But we saw uh, improvement of the neurological status after reopening of the vessel in aspect 325. Okay. 022 was not good indication for a end vascular therapy. 325 seems to be good in uh, registry. So we collected, we selected this patient with the aspect 325 and did randomization. Interesting. And your primary outcome? Hmm. Primary outcome was, was set based on the analysis of the previous uh, registry. Uh, and primary outcome was um, um, defined as uh, MRS of 0 to 3 at 90 days. Excellent, excellent. And I saw that you were evaluating some other additional outcomes in modified rank and scale, as well as, uh, you know, I, I, I was really interesting in the fact that you had an entire safety profile to look at the safety of this, as well as things like whether or not patients got decompressive craniectomy. Uh, what was your thinking there when you decided, hey, we want to include the decompressive craniectomy as an outcome to study? Hmm. Uh, actually, uh, if we treat the patient uh, uh, with uh, large infections, we sometimes encounter the uh, hemorrhage, like uh, subacute hemorrhage or hemorrhagic transformation of the infected area. So brain swells after the treatment. So we sometimes have to perform a decompressive craniectomy. Right. So that, that is one of the very important points for us as a clinician. And so we set safety outcomes. One of them is a symptomatic ICH within 48 hours. And the second one is a, any ICH within uh, 48 hours and death within 90 days. And the compressed craniectomy was, uh, was selected as a safety outcomes. Excellent. Excellent. And so as we move into these uh, results of your study, um, what look starting with that primary outcome of modified rank and score of zero to three within 90 days, where, where did your study fall? And how did that, how did that turn out? Yes, uh, 100 patients were allocated to endovascular group and 102 patient was to no endovascular group. Uh, when comparing these two groups, uh, primary outcome, molecular ranking of 0 to 3 were more frequently observed in EVT, 31% yes. compared to 12.8% uh, in no EVT group. Uh, relative risk was 2.43 and p-value was 0 0.002. So it mm -hmm. means that endovascular therapy uh, improved the patient outcome um, uh, even when the patient infarction was large. Excellent. And I, I saw that you, you all, your group also had done what we call a rank and shift analysis, um, where you were reporting the results of how the, the spread of the rank and scores changed. And, you know, I was wondering, you know, Kazu, could you provide us with a little bit more information about how do you do such an analysis and why is it so important? Yeah, thank you. Uh, modify ranking scale and uh, that's uh, called the uh, SIFT analysis. And uh, that means uh, uh, one scale lower uh, toward the uh, good uh, outcome. And uh, we also... Uh, win the and uh, we also get the success uh, to express the uh, endovascular therapies uh, is effective uh, in the SIFT analysis. Right. 
So what I think what if I can understand what you're saying there, you're not just looking at a single outcome point, you know, a modified ranking of three, but you're yeah. looking at how did the entire population do relative to the control group? You know, were there overall improvements as a, as a shift in terms of how, how the entire group does an, ag an aggregate? Would that be correct? Yeah, yeah, correct. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And so um, all in all, do, how do you feel that um, this study uh, will impact patient mm. care? Yes, uh, actually, uh, any ICS within 48 hours uh, increased in endovascular group compared to no EBT group. However, uh, total uh, 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 outcome, primary outcome was uh, better in EBT. So we are very happy to see uh, this result and uh, hopefully the endovascular therapy will be more performed for the patient with the large infections in the world. Excellent, excellent. And, you know, I, if I can kind of go back here a little bit, you did mention this intracranial hemorrhage outcome as a safety outcome. And certainly, as you presented, the overall rate of intracranial hemorrhage uh, was slightly higher in the treatment group. But as you showed in your presentation, the symptomatic hemorrhage didn't seem to change. And so it, in all in all, what do, what do you take, what should we take away from that? What should our, what should our, how do we interpret that result? Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, uh, it is good to, to see that the symptomatic ICH didn't differ between the groups. That was, I, we were so relieved to look at that. But however, <laughs> Any ICH means a small ICH or subagonal hemorrhage may uh, more frequently occur in EBT group. So we have to pay attention to the post-operative CT or MRI to carefully to look at carefully the brain. Mm -hmm. And if patient has any ICH, we have to we have to care the patient uh, by a serial CT or MRI, or we have to who control patient blood pressure and so on, like that. So that is also a very important information for us as uh, in clinic. Excellent. And, you know, to that point, you know, um, it, and I, obviously we haven't seen the paper yet, just the presentation that y'all made. Um, in terms of post-thrombectomy care, meaning the kind of care the patient's getting in the ICU after the thrombectomy, especially with this group that really, you know, again, we're looking at patients who already quote unquote had a stroke on CT. Are there any protocols or were there a particular protocol that was followed across all institutions or was there some variability there? Is there an opportunity to study that in this population to do subgroup analyses of your work to really try to understand how should we, if we're going to intervene on these patients, which we should be now, I guess, based on your results, how are we going to treat them post uh, post operatively? Yes, uh, post operation, uh, we have to pay attention to uh, hemorrhage, hemorrhagic transformation, uh, frequently, frequently occur, uh, especially in EBT group, fifty eight percent, so high. So we have to perform a CT before tra transferring the patient to ICU, and even uh, uh, after. Uh, uh, entering into the ICU, you should care the patient uh, uh, status. Uh, brain may swell uh, after the thrombectomy, or patient may worsen due to a hemorrhage. So, oh, special attention should be paid for the patient after the procedure. Excellent, excellent. No, and so as we come away from your presentation and what would you say to the clinician out there who is here at the meeting or, and trying to determine, Hey, how do I take your study and apply it to my practice? What would be your message to that clinician? Yes. Um, uh, we think that um, this RCT uh, may open the window uh, for the patient with allergy uh, infarctions uh, 
we may be able to save the patient by mechanical thrombectomy based on evidence. So this is very good uh, uh, information. Um, however, uh, there, there are some limitations of this study. Uh, number one is uh, this study was done in Japan. So almost all patients were Asian. So racial difference may, may affect the result. This is number one. Uh, second one is uh, we uh, evaluate the stroke uh, by uh, MRI dominantly. More than 80% of the patient was diagnosed with MRI. So as you know, uh, diffusion-weighted image is very sensitive. So scoring point is one point lower in MRI. So oh, we have to uh, take this information into consideration to, to decide uh, the, uh, to, to do or not to do uh, endovascular therapy. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much.